The Pirates score four runs in the sixth inning, which is more than they've been scoring in full games going back about the last month. Brian Reynolds hit a triple. Rowdy Tellez made it interesting. He had a double. That was two extra base hits in the game for Brian Reynolds. O'Neill Cruz was two for four with that homer. And I was driving back from that wedding shower listening to Joe Block's call on the radio. And I went berserk in my car, man. O'Neill Cruz now has two homers in the last three games. If you go back the last 13 games for O'Neill Cruz, he's hitting 310 with a 356 on base percentage, a 500 slugging percentage, and an OPS of 856. Just 13 strikeouts in those 13 games. I think if he goes one a game, I think that's actually an improvement for O'Neill Cruz. Is this the Pirates turning it around? Is this just one inning? Maybe a little column A, a little column B. All I know is they needed to, at minimum, win the series against the Rockies. The Rockies have yet to win a series all season long. Could this be a turning point for the Pirates, or will we have to wait and see? Well, I mean, I kind of leave it in what you just said about the Rockies. Uh, you know, you won against a bad team. But you got to start somewhere, right? Yep. You, you, you got to figure it out somewhere. And if they didn't figure it out, you know, they lost the first game of the series and won the next two. Um, that's what you needed, obviously, to do. But if they were to lose the series against the Rockies, then, I mean, it's just almost, I mean, you're kind of in dire straits at that point. But you need to figure it out some way. And even though that the Rockies are a bad club, um, you did win that series and now you move on and you're uh, back home or you're, you're against the Angels starting today. So um, it is nice to see that a guy like O'Neill Cruz, where even last week we, we talked about what John Parado said to, to Starkey. Does O'Neill Cruz know baseball? Like we were at that point. But I, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards I hope that they're just, hey, man, just be yourself. Hey, Brian Reynolds, Reynolds, just be yourself. Connor Joe, just be yourself. Philosophy is philosophy, but sometimes it has to go out the window. Just play. Just play the game. And if you feel like that you, you can swing on a, on a ball, then go after it. And I, I think that this was the type of series that you can kind of explore that a little bit, not knowing if they really actually did because we're not there in the locker room or in the dugout or wherever. But I feel like it was a little bit different. Yeah, I, I wonder if the O'Neill Cruz homer the other night even though it was a garbage time home run, kind of made them go, oh, right. all right. I mean, I'm sure for O'Neill Cruz, it felt good just to see a ball go over the fence. And then to your point about O'Neill Cruz is Gregory Polanco, which is what John Parado said. He did admire a ball that went off the top of the wall. I mean, he admires a ball. He kind of looked like an idiot. We saw the same thing sort of happen with Rowdy Tellez, and then he had to leg it out to second base, and I don't know that it's ever a good thing when Rowdy <laughs> Tellez has the leg out of ball, and then he wound up coming around and scoring. But it was a it was a moment before the O'Neill Cruz home run where I think we can see more of this, and it will aid the Pirates dramatically. So you had Key Brian Hayes ground out to the right side of the infield, and you had the runner go from second base to third, and you had a runner come in from third base to home. And that, to me, was just a good baseball play. Mm -hmm. You're not always going to have the long ball. You're not always going to string hits together. But can you do the smart thing? Key Brian Hayes did. You go the other way, you advance a runner, and you get a runner in the score. Hopefully, you will start seeing the ball go over the fence a little bit more for these guys. It's just so perplexing to me, man, that they are where they are right now. And they're not in a terrible spot. We just looked at it before the start of the show. They are five games back in the division, and it's early. That's not great. You're only a game and a half back in the wild card. If you can start hitting the ball the way we thought you could hit the ball going into the season, you should be in this thing for the long haul. Your pitching's been good. Your bullpen was excellent yesterday. Luis Ortiz goes an inning and two-thirds. And then you had the pickoff from Aroldis Chapman. He goes an inning with two strikeouts. David Bednar comes in, and he closed the door. One inning, just the one hit, one strikeout, but he gets the save. If they can just hit fairly close to what we thought they could coming into the season, they're going to be in this thing. And I thought the whole time, man, we wouldn't see these prolonged slumps because O'Neill Cruz has power and Brian Reynolds has power. 
and Rowdy Tellez mm, has power. And Jack Sawinski, who I thought had some good swings in this series and in this game, has got power. Maybe that's starting to come around. I don't want to make too much out of an inning. I don't want to make too much out of a series, but it's got to turn around somehow. They're too good for it not to turn around. And we, we had this conversation. Or, or is it the philosophy or are these guys just not that good? Even if they're not as good as we thought, they're better than what they've showed. Mm -hmm. Maybe this can be the turning point. I just feel like this team is never going to get on the same page with everything. I feel like they're either going to be really good or good at something, and then something else is going to be bad, whether it's the bullpen's going to be down and the hitting's going to be up. The hitting's down, the bullpen's up, the starting pitcher's up, starting pitching's up, and the bullpen is down. Like, I, I just I don't see this team getting on the same page with everything of co collectively of a baseball game and a baseball team, but that actually might be enough from what you just said about the whole division. Like, if they can just do that at the right time, I think that they're going to be okay. You said, what, one and a half games out of, of a wild card yeah. spot right now? Like, I, I know we get we overanalyze, and we should as, as Pirates fans and, you know, Pirates watchers, but I feel like if they can just get on the same page with everything for a series or two, I think that they'll be fine. But I don't know if they can actually do that. I really don't. I don't know if they're ever going to be able to do that. At any point this well, year. I think that's a mark of an average team, and I yeah. think even at best, we all kind of thought they'd be an average team this year. In fact, I picked them to go 81 and 81. I don't know that that gets you in. That definitely has you in the conversation. It's way early for any of this, but I think we can frame an argument here. So the Nationals, they're 17 and 17. I don't expect them to be good. But why do I bring them up? They hold the final wild card spot. So a 500 team holds the final wild card spot. The Padres trail them; they're under 500. The Mets trail them; they're under 500. The Reds have all of a sudden lost five in a row. They're two and eight in their last ten. They're 16 and 18. There. Then there's the Pirates at 16 and 19. St. Louis at 15 and 19. Arizona played for a World Series last year. They're 15 and 20 right now. You're going to see some teams fall back. You're going to see some teams climb. But the point is, this National League is not very good. In this NL Central, you've got the Brewers and you've got the Cubs, and they've proven that they're pretty good baseball teams at this point. We never thought that they'd be teams that would win more than 84, 85 games. So I think you need to be strategic here if you're the Pirates. They stopped the bleeding a little bit in this series that they just played against Colorado. You've got a bad team coming in here in Los Angeles. Mike Trout might be out for the whole season. You're not going to face him at all. That's not a good baseball team. That's coming in here. Can you win two out of three in this series and start to build momentum? And then you've got this nine-game stretch where you're going to be playing your National League Central foes. Can you call up a few guys? Mm -hmm. like, you, you, O'Neal Cruz is going to be a mainstay in the lineup, right? Jack Sawinski is going to be out there more often than not. Key Brian Hayes, Brian Reynolds, you know those dudes are going to be your – quote-unquote difference makers. Can you shuffle things around them? Can you call up a Nick Gonzalez? Can you call up a G1 Bay? Jake Lamb, I don't know what happened yesterday for him. I know what happened with Skeens, who we'll get to. He was leading AAA in hitting. Mm -hmm. Can you get these guys up, and can you move around your depth pieces to punch up your order when the starting pitching has been good for you? Like that, that when you talk to Orton about, I don't know if this is a baseball team. It's always gonna, that's going to have everything clicking at all cylinders. I agree with you on that. But now that your starting pitching has been good, can you punch up that lineup a little bit? Like I, I don't think it needs to be for Ben Sherrington this tough decision to make. Get guys up here. And go on a little bit of a run, even if you go 500 over your next month or so, like you're going to be in this thing. So don't have feet of steel. Be light on your feet and try to punch this team up a little bit. Do you feel like whenever you hear Shelty uh, talk that there's any sense of pressure? I was watching him talk. I think it was either yesterday or two days ago. I, I was watching on you know Sportsnet. Mm -hmm. and I was like, he seems calm, which was like not calming to me, but like a good sign. Like, hey, it's a long season. We're working through things. We're not playing the way we want to right now. But there was no really, to me, any sign of like pressure like oh we need some urgency like we need to win now no i don't get that at all from him yeah any urgency i really don't or or ben sherrington who we're going to hear from in the next segment do you think there should be yeah of course this is the year man like not the not the year 
not they're going to win the World Series, but this is the year where you're supposed to win. And the 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 league sucks and the division isn't all that good. So there should be urgency to try to make hay right now. Like you're going to get Paul Skeens here soon. Jared Jones is a dog. Ugh. The league is eventually going to punch back on Jared Jones, and that doesn't mean that he's not going to be great, but is he going to dominate every time out? No. You want to take advantage of that now. You want to take advantage of your starting rotation now. It looks like your bullpen's starting to come together. You want to take advantage of that now. The one point, uh, the one part of this team that's not been good, they can't hit the freaking baseball apart from one inning in this series. They haven't scored runs in a month. One inning. So... There needs to be urgency. You can't just wait. Everything's going to click. Yeah, well, what if you're 9, 10 games under 500 when things start coming around? Have you dug yourself too big of a hole? Yeah, there should be urgency. Mm-hmm.